Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Anish Gupta, and today we are back with another episode of the QB Whisperer series. Now, you guys have shown a lot of love over these last few weeks, and wow, I can't believe we've already done a good number of quarterbacks now. I think we've done five. Uh, we've done Josh Allen, Tyler Murray, uh, Joe Burrow, Ryan Tannehill, Lamar Jackson. Now, the sixth episode is going to be, oh, man, well, I'm kind of, you know, I didn't want to make this video, but going to be on Jalen Hurts and you know for those who uh, regularly watch this podcast I know a couple of my friends are watching this I am one of the few lone Carson Wentz fans that are left on this planet <laughs> I mean you know there it's been a rough year for him and it's been a rough year for me dealing with all the all the hate and all the you know all the laughter I guess not really hate but just people you know kind of throwing it back in my face uh, it's definitely been a rough year in terms of that but you know hey uh, Jalen Hurts let's talk about him now you know with this series it, uh, you know we talk about a little bit of the context of the quarterback so you know their college careers how they were drafted then we talk about what they did prior to what they're doing now but the thing is now that I'm doing Jalen Hurts you know I just thought it would be with the atmosphere going on I thought we had to talk about it so um, I'm not going to really you know talk about much of the stuff prior but I'm going to definitely go over the uh, the things we've seen right now and then I'm going to talk about what I uh, saw, you know, strengths, weaknesses, and can he be a franchise guy? Uh, so yeah, let's get right into it. Obviously, Jalen Hurts was already thrusted into some college spotlight. Uh, I mean, you know, there were guys like Deshaun Watson who were just constantly, you know, looked at from a national stage. He had the similar, he had a similar type of career. I mean, you know, he comes in as a true freshman at Alabama and he has 23 touchdowns, nine interceptions, I believe. He set an SEC record for uh, rushing yards by a quarterback in their true freshman year with 950. And his sophomore year, he leads them to a national championship, but he gets benched uh, for Tua Tagovailoa, who wins the game. Uh, obviously, we all remember that pass in overtime to win it. And, you know, what, there were questions. I mean, what is Jalen Hurts' uh, you know, honestly long-term football career over? I mean, there were questions like that, right? And 2018, uh, I believe the following year, Tua, you know, does it great. Uh, I believe he was a Heisman finalist. And Jalen Hurts really didn't have much, so he transfers to Oklahoma. And then, you know, with Lincoln Riley, he puts up a Heisman-like season, 32 touchdowns for the air, only eight picks. He makes the college football playoff. And at the time, I don't know if, you know, how many college football fans I have out there, but, you know, Oklahoma had to work their way up just to get that fourth seed. Uh, and he, he did it. He made plays against, you know, teams like Baylor and uh, other teams in the Big 12 to qualify. And he also had 1,300 rushing yards and 20 rushing touchdowns. Again, that's a lot. Like, I mean, I know it's college, but still, that's really good. So, you know, 52 total touchdowns, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and the best part about Jalen Hurts is, I think, draft profile that people look to because there were really questions on, you know, was he a third rounder or a second rounder? I mean, the thing was, he was a winner in college, 38 and four in four years. That's impressive. That is very impressive. And he was a play extender. He was good on intermediate balls, and he was tough, durable, and he had leadership intangibles. And, you know, for me, that wins me over, all right? That does. I, I just, you know, I always look beyond the stats. Uh, I'm not like most analysts in terms of that. And, you know, with him, 38-4, and four, that's something to build off of. That's something you can put on your resume. And I think something they saw Harry Roseman, Doug Peterson, because they took him with the 53rd overall pick and we, we knew the backlash that came with it at the time. This was back in April, right? I mean, first Jordan Love, then Jalen Hurts on day two. I mean, there were a lot of people that were like, what are you doing? You have Carson Wentz, a guy who, okay, I'm going to try and not hype him up as much because you know what he's doing right now. But, you know, a guy who had 27 touchdowns last year with, you know, damn near nobody and took him to the playoffs. So everyone was like, what are you doing? Get him some more help. Um, but, you know, let's, I think, kind of transition on to what he's doing now. So that was kind of his college background. You know, it's a, it was a pretty uh, nationally televised background that people knew about. Uh, but, you know, now Carson Wentz, the main starter in Philly, honestly, he, the guy who was considered to be the franchise quarterback has played god awful. And I can't defend it. I've said it numerous occasions. I can't defend it. He has played bad. Uh, and, you know, uh, Hertz comes in against Green Bay when the game was basically out of reach, but he gives this team a spark. Now, you know, there were plays like the punt return touchdown. And, you know, I don't even, for me, it's weird because I think I always like to fo focus on the mental aspect of football. And I just think him coming in gave them that team a spark. And it was similar. I just saw some parallels to the Eagles back in 2018 when they go five and seven with Carson Wentz, who was battling a back injury at the time. And then Nick Foles comes in and they go four and oh and go nine and seven to make the playoffs. 
and were, you know, literally a drop pass away from the NFC championship game. So they, there was a, there was a spark there. I, I, I saw something and, you know, I, I just, I had a weird feeling that Hertz was going to win this game. I didn't pick it. I'm not going to say I called it or anything or I expected it. I just, there was a weird feeling with this game. And, uh, but you know, the, I wanted to go back to the Green Bay game before I transition to the, the one we obviously want to talk about. There was a play to Jalen Rager on a go route. And, you know, Jalen Hurts was facing pressure. He took some pressure on that, uh, on that play. But he delivers a ball perfectly. And I think it was at least 45 yards in the air. But it was a perfect ball. And, again, I, I think, you know, over the past five weeks with the series, I'm always telling guys, like, I look for those spark plays. Something that I can look forward to to the next week, to the next year. Something that I, can, that I see that, you know, shows me something towards the, uh, that the quarterback can build off of. And that play to Jalen Rager, I saw something. There was, that was a really good throw. I mean, you know, it showed that his arm talent that was supposedly bad, it, it wasn't. I mean, like, he, hadn't, he didn't really show anything that said his arm talent could not be better or could not be improved upon, or it wasn't even a weakness at the time. So now let's transition to what really is, you know, behind this episode, the Saints game. I mean, you know, they come in. I don't care if it was at home. They were playing the number one team in the NFC. And quite frankly, it was probably the hottest team in football from the last nine weeks. I mean, they were 9-0 and and they were showing, you know, no signs of slowing down despite the QB chain. Their defense was playing lights out. And this Eagles offense, zero sacks allowed and 246 rushing yards. I repeat, 246 rushing yards with this Eagles team, a team that literally couldn't run the damn football with Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. I mean, they couldn't do anything with Carson Wentz. And I mean, I don't know what happened, but the, but the play call, play calling like flipped. I mean, it was some of the best plays that I saw. They utilized mess coverages, crossing routes, Yankee concepts. I mean, it was great. And uh, you know, they beat the best team in the NFC. I mean, you know, simple as that. It was no fluke. They looked really good throughout the game. I mean, there were some plays that they could have uh, made extra. You know, the missed kick on the 22-yard field goal. I mean, they, in fact, they could have even won by more. But I mean, the 17 points in the second quarter. Uh, was really, really impressive. And it showed, you know, they finally ran the ball. And I, I, it just shows for any team, if you run the ball, it transitions into the play action game, the passing game, you know, it moves defenders back. And that's why these playoff teams run game travels well. Even in the Super Bowl, a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, who had a record low, you know, 23 rushes per game, what honestly uh, sealed the deal? It was the running game by Damian Williams towards the end of the game. So it just shows how important running the football is. And Jalen Hurts gives you that, you know, extra dynamic. I don't want to transition to the strengths just yet, but because he had, he went 17 of 30, 167 yards and a touchdown. I believe he had 108 yards through the ground for a quarterback. That is very good. Uh, and, you know, there were a couple things that I saw. I wanted to mention, you know, throw to Alshon Jeffrey. Um, that was his lone touchdown, passing touchdown of the game. And it was on a fourth and two and he faced pressure again. It was similar to the Rager go wrap, but he faced pressure. And it was, that's a hard throw to make on Marshawn Lattimore, a hard throw Alshon Jeffrey, who really hasn't been the same. I, I don't think he's physically 100% still, but, I mean, it was a back shoulder throw to a guy who has, I believe, a bigger frame, 6'3", and it was just perfect placement. That's not an easy throw to make near the sideline, near the pylon, and he did it. On fourth and two, I thought that was very bold, again, of Doug Peterson to do. Again, it's just you live and die by it, I guess, and this time it worked, so kudos to him. But the other thing was the final drive before the uh, first half expired. Two big running plays by Jalen Hurts. The Saints defense, I mean, they didn't – it's, I, I get it that there's not much film on him, but you know his play style. And the fact that, you know, there was still that knowledge that Jalen Hurts can run, and he was still able to do it on both sides, whether it was running up the middle or to the sideline, it just shows how dynamic his legs can be. And it shows that, I wouldn't say, you know, dual threat quarterbacks are the nece uh, necessity, or however you pronounce that word. <laughs> uh, it doesn't show that dual quarterbacks are necessary for this game, but it, it's working. I mean, we're seeing it across the league, and I think this dynamic that he adds is great for a guy like Doug Peterson, who likes to have these aggressive play calls, who likes to get these big plays, big spark plays, and a read option or a, uh, you know, a run uh, down the field for 20 yards. That can spark an offense. So, you know, let's go to his strengths. Back to the thing I was saying about, you know, the whole another dynamic thing. He, like Lamar Jackson in the previous episode, he adds another layer to this offense in the sense, you know, for the read option. Again, with the whole A-gap, gap, B-gap gap with the defender. So there was a play against the Packers. It was a run by Miles Sanders. It wasn't that much. But I just want to show you that right when Jalen Hurts snaps the ball and he goes to the left, 
Adrian Amos immediately, the Packers safety is immediately drawn in, expecting and anticipating that Jalen Hurts is going to take the ball to the left. Now that in itself moves one defender down who's a good tackler. Safety is meant to tackle and play, uh, you know, in the box. That's a strong safety uh, in Adrian Amos. And he's prepared for the run, but now that gives a little bit of, that creates one-on-one blocking and it creates even matchups with the Eagles offensive line and tight ends that are blocking as with the Packers front seven. That is very favorable. Now, in this play specifically, it didn't go that far, but I'm just saying for future plays, that sets up for success. And that's what translated in the Saints game, right? The Saints game, they ran a lot of read option. And, you know, whether it was Jalen Hurts taking it to the right for big gains, it allowed also Miles Sanders to thrive off it. And that's why he was able to get so many, you know, uh, big runs. Uh, Aside from, I think he had a a really long touchdown run. Uh, But aside from that, he was still able to get some big runs. And with Carson Wentz, you aren't able to do the same thing just because his running isn't as respected in that regard. He's not as elusive as a guy like Jalen Hurts. So that is another dynamic I wanted to talk about. Now, I, I think I said it earlier, he's good on intermediate throws. Now that it's, it's intermediate, I'd say is like, 15 to 25 yards and I'd say he's good on those and you know back to saying he responds well to pressure now not the pressure of the media or anything I'm talking about pressure in game so uh you know the Saints front seven is lethal I mean we saw them put eight sacks on Matt Ryan so this is no joke and they got they were able to get towards him it's just they weren't able to bring him down because he was able to extend the play and it wasn't even he was trying to throw the ball away which I thought it was really surprising because he wasn't even put in the position where he had to do that he was able to make guys get open uh, and I just thought that was incredible. He ran the mesh concept in the Saints game particularly well. Um, there's a, you know, there was a uh, play to, I think it was Gregory was wide open, and there's a, there's like a high, uh, you know, uh, people who play football they know this is like a high five thing. There, uh, two guys are going across each other, and they just uh, it's so close to each other they can high five each other, and Rager gets wide open, uh, easy crossing around, and takes it for a big game, a big game. And, uh, you know, obviously another thing with him, it's I'm trying to, you know, uh, attribute this to his passing. He extends the play. So there was a throw against the Packers to Greg Ward. Now, what happens on this play is um, Jalen Hurts takes the snap, right? Um, And he moves to the right. And as he's rolling out to the right, right, he's got the arm strength. I think people, people underestimate his arm strength. So as he's rolling out to the right, he creates two openings. Um, by rolling out and while they're both 40 yards away he creates one that's going uh, up to the right and one that's going to the left I think it was I forget what kind of kind of concept this is I think it was a verticals concept but um, it's there's two open receivers there and this causes the safety to get very confused because the safety is obviously going to play to the side that the quarterback is going to uh, if it's a zone uh, coverage Um, and he's obviously going to follow the one to the right while you know, the, the guy on the left is open. It's a four, it's 40 yards away. It's going to be hard to throw a cross body. So I think Jalen Hurts knew, uh, knew that, but it was still a difficult throw to the one to Ward as he's going down because there's two guys there and you have to fit it in a pocket and he threw it perfectly. I mean, that was a perfect dime. Um, the safety came late and it just, he saw the window and just hit it on a dime. And it just shows how you can extend the play with a guy like that. And that allows for this, uh, you know, for Eagles receivers who aren't able to get separation right away to eventually get it because they do have some speed on the receiver position. They can still, you know, any NFL receiver can get separation with a little bit of ample time, Uh, you know, but it does work both ways too. So, um, you know, I also see this as a potential weakness going forward. If he keeps extending the play, trying to do this, this allows, um, you know, the secondary of opposing defenses to get back in the play or, you know, uh, tighten up and that'll maybe cause a potential, uh, potential turnovers that we may not see. So that is something that I anticipate going forward. Um, you know, again, another thing with a moving on to the weaknesses, I think is I think he needs to get better trusting his pocket. I mean, we saw it too much, a little bit of just him rolling out. Now, again, there's going to be more film on him. They're going to, you know, realize his tendencies with this footwork footwork. When is he going to move out? When is he going to move out to the left or right? Right. There are people, teams are going to start to realize that. I think this, this episode was made very early. So, you know, uh, teams are definitely going to start figuring out what are his tendencies to roll out of the pocket. So he needs to trust it a little bit, step up, you know, take your time a little bit. This Eagles offensive line, I know it's bad. Uh, they didn't play bad today. So I, I don't know. I mean, now, oh, you know, as a Carson Wentz fan, is this, was this on him? I, I don't want to say it. I, you know, maybe this, I'm holding out hope that he can, you know, revive his career in a place like Indianapolis. 
Um, but, you know, I think Jalen Hurts needs to trust his pocket presence a little bit more because he's got it. He's got some of it. Again, I told you, the two best throws I've seen, the one to Rager on the go round and the one to Alshon Jeffrey, he stood tall in the pocket and he delivered uh, perfect throws. So trust it more. I mean, you know, it's um, – as a quarterback, you need to hit those big throws, and it's not going to happen every time rolling out to the left or right. Simple as that. Uh, another thing, you know, this was back in college – uh, because, again, we don't have much – I mean, I, what is there to say? I mean, against the Saints, he played the best he could. I mean, he won the game. He put his position – the team in position to win. Um, I would say, you know, there was a one play against Baylor, I believe, uh, where he didn't uh, plant his feet and he didn't step up. And basically he threw it to his receiver um, a little bit too far to the left. And since he didn't plant his feet, uh, his back heel wasn't down. Uh, he sa sailed the ball a little bit too high. Uh, and he didn't put his receiver in a good spot because even it, while it was semi catchable, if he catches it, it's not a touchdown. He should have thrown it by the numbers, which is, you know, allows the receiver to go straight through, maybe catch it, uh, maybe diving catch or even by the pylon, I thought would have been better if he threw it by the numbers. Uh, that would have been a little, that's a, but the thing is, that's a five yard difference. That's not, that's a pretty noticeable gap. So um, that was just one play, I guess I saw, you know, uh, watching his college highlights. I thought I nit nitpicked. I think that'll we'll see a little bit of that. I think uh, as he translates to you know NFL defenses, there will be times where I think he might sail the ball a little bit too much, and uh, defenses might uh, get up under it and uh, maybe intercept him because we haven't seen you know his uh, you know at least his turnover proneness because he had a decent amount of you know bad turnovers in college wasn't a lot but he did and uh, I think we're going to see more of that now you know to kind of transition is he a franchise guy? Look, with the Eagles, I really don't know because Carson Wentz has a $60 million cap hit. You know, I'm trying to take out logistics in it. But, like, can Jalen Hurts represent this franchise? Most definitely. Like, he can. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I want to take a side right now, but I can't. This episode's a little bit different than others just because we haven't seen him for much. I really wanted to make this just because, you know, of the spotlight he is in right now and um, uh, what this uh, Eagles team could do. I mean, they're not out of the NFC East yet. Uh, so, you know, I, I think he has the potential to do it just because look at how this team played with him. I mean, there was a spark and I wouldn't be surprised if they start winning a, a, a little bit um, to finish off this year. And like I said, when I look at stuff, it's not about how you start the year, it's how you finish. So, you know, I know Jack was saying you might start to buy a little bit of Jalen Hurts stock. Hey, I might join him, maybe buy a couple shares of it. But, uh, you know, to kind of wrap this episode up, uh, this was definitely something that I didn't want to make because I love Carson Wentz. I still do. You know, I, I say it time and time again. I'm still going to hold out faith. Uh, but this was about Jalen Hurts. This was about Jalen Hurts. He played great today uh, as the time I'm recording this. Hopefully he can carry it over for this Eagles team that, you know, really needed a spark. And I think he finally brought it to them. Uh, he's got some good intangibles. I think we saw it today. Uh, obviously, Miles Sanders pointed it out, too, in a recent uh, interview, I think, or it was a tweet. I can't remember. But um, let me know what you guys think. Was there anything I missed about Jalen Hurts? Was there anything during the game that I could have pointed out? or anything in college that I missed, any strengths, uh, or anything that highlights any of the qualities that I said. And Road to 500 is on the way on both platforms, Instagram and YouTube. Uh, our links will be down below in the description, or check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know again what you guys think in the comments, and we will see you next time.